But the, what I'm going to talk today about, kind of an off the wall thing, you don't see all the time, is the number three. The numbers are very significant in the Bible, as we know. The number seven is the perfect number, represents completeness. Uh, we know about the number 40. Uh, rain 40 days and nights and flooded the earth, time of Noah. Jesus fasted 40 days and nights, was hungry afterward, was tempted by the devil. But the number three kind of caught my attention. I started seeing things happening in the Bible in threes. And uh, to my surprise, it's mentioned 467 times in the Bible. Did not know that. Uh, one obvious way that the number three is mentioned or represented is the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Some commentators mention uh, Genesis 1.26 uh, is probably about the first time that it's mentioned. And God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Us and our being plural, more than one. And usually when it's talking plural in God's sense, talking about the Father, Son, and Spirit. And uh, as you read through Genesis, read about three patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's also mentioned in Matthew 22, 32. And uh, talking about prayer. Jews have three set times prayer, which would be a good habit for us to get into. Morning, afternoon, and evening. Psalm 55, 17. It says, Evening and morning, and at noon I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. And uh, you can read about Daniel in the sixth chapter, tenth verse. He's praying morning, noon, and night in front of his window. And uh, kind of when you read that story in the sixth chapter, and that'd be a good read for the, for you this evening, uh, is kind of rebellious about it in a way. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going I'm going to do what I need to do regardless of what this king says. And. Uh, in Isaiah 6 3, the seraphims, one cried to another, said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Uh, triple repetition, kind of emphatic. Telling God, if he's nothing else, he's holy. And uh, we can't forget about Jonah in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights. Kind of a preview of what Jesus was going to do for us later on. And talking about Jesus, uh, he told the 12 apostles that he took three with him on very special events. Peter, James, and John, the transfiguration. Read about that in Mark 9, 2 through 9. They went a little further than the other apostles of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, notice that Jesus also prayed three times in the Garden, not my will, but thine. And uh, just found this out this morning. I was by accident. I was looking on Facebook. And y'all might, if you look on Facebook, you see these reels and get a lot of them by Billy Graham. And you know, uh, John 11 35, Jesus wept. Well, it's recorded in the Bible that he wept three times. Uh, Luke. 1941 42, he wept over Jerusalem for not accepting him as, a, as their Savior or recognizing him as a Savior. Uh, John 11 35, of course, over the grave of Lazarus. In Hebrews 5 7, talking about the Garden of Gethsemane, where he weeps and he knows what's coming. And that's the three recorded uh, instances. He may have wept more, more than likely. We read later on also that Peter denied Christ three times, Matthew 26. Then later on, Jesus restores Peter in John 21, 15 through 17, when he tells, when he asks Peter, Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter suggests, well, feed my sheep three times. Unfortunately, while we even know there's a holy trinity, there's an unholy trinity. Revelation 12 and 13, there's Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. The holy trinity is characterized by true love and goodness, and the unholy trinity portrays hatred, deception, and evil. Nothing good about it. And the 
find two examples I'm going to go over are uh, two of my favorites. Of course, Christ was raised on the third day. Acts 10 40 says, Him God raised up the third day and chewed him open. If you're looking for good news in this chaotic world, that's it right there. And uh, we turn to the final chapter in the Bible, Revelation 22, verses 7, 12, and 20, where Jesus says, I come quickly. In verses 7 and 12, he says, Behold, I come quickly. He's telling us, Look out, be on the watch. In verse, seven, in verse 20, he says, Surely I come quickly. It's going to happen, folks. You can bank on it. And ending on that, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do so before it's too late. Because when he says, Surely I come quickly, it may come sooner than what we expect. Anybody got anything to say or comment on or anything like that?